better shape than I am, Kath. Listen, Brad, it's only a matter of mind-body coordination, you know. Well, if that's the case, I bet I can beat you back home. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Kathy, you okay? Are you choking? Hold on. Okay. 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 Are you okay? I think so. Sure? <clears throat> That's a little sore. Mm. Come on, I'm okay. Thanks to you. Kathy was lucky. For every year, nearly 4,000 Americans choked to death. Men and women whose lives could have been saved by a simple technique, the Heimlich Maneuver. As a nation, we've grown accustomed to rushing through meals. While we read the paper, as we argue about football scores. First thing in the morning, okay? Fine. Okay. While we talk on the phone. I'm Dr. Henry Heimlich. When you stop to consider the way we eat, it's small wonder that choking has become one of the leading causes of accidental death. How does it happen, and what can you do about it? To answer those questions, Let's take a look at an actual case. Nearly every weekend, Frank Ramirez has a group over for a barbecue and a few beers. It's become a tradition because they say nobody can fix a steak like Frank can. Hey, Frank, how's it coming? There you go. All right. Hold the sound. It's going to be great. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with Frank? Oh, he's OK. Give him another beer. <laughs> Hey, what's happening? He's choking. He's turning blue. Slap him on the back. No, that won't help. I know what to do. <laughs> what you've just seen is all too common. An everyday family gathering, a good time that can suddenly turn to tragedy. In an emergency such as this, there's no time to waste using methods which may be ineffective or even harmful. For within just four minutes of the onset of choking, a person may be dead or suffer permanent brain damage. Let's take a closer look at Frank's case to see exactly what happened. Almost done. They're going to be great. A large piece of food, instead of passing into the stomach, became lodged in the windpipe, which carries air to the lungs. The result? Asphyxiation, caused by blockage of the airway. Now here are six simple signs to help you recognize a choking victim. Usually you know he's been eating. He's unable to breathe or to speak. He may deliberately clutch his throat to make the universally recognized sign that means, I am choking. His skin color may turn pale or flushed and then deep blue. 
And if treatment is not immediate, he will lose consciousness and collapse. Frank's friend became aware that he was choking and used the Heimlich maneuver to save Frank's life. I'll demonstrate how to perform the maneuver on one of the guests. This is Jennifer. Jennifer will only expel this object if the Heimlich maneuver is performed properly. The rescuer must be positioned correctly and his fist placed on the right spot on the abdomen. Now watch. Stand behind the victim, wrap your arms around the waist. Now feel for the bottom of the rib cage, make a fist, place the thumb side of the fist on the abdomen, slightly above the navel and below the rib cage. Grasp your fist with your other hand and press into the abdomen with a quick upward thrust. Repeat the maneuver several times if necessary until air forced from the lungs expels the object. Remember, don't squeeze or press on the chest because you might cause an injury. That's why it's best to learn with Jennifer. Bend your elbows and press your fist into the upper abdomen. The resumption of breathing and the return of normal color indicates that the airway has been cleared. Now, if the victim is seated, you can still use the Heimlich maneuver. Here, the back of the chair provides a firm support and helps enhance the effect. If the victim is in a booth in a restaurant or in an airplane seat, simply turn it to the side and perform the maneuver in the usual manner. Normally, there are no side effects except a new appreciation of what it means to be alive. But if there is any question, have the choking victim see a physician immediately. Of course, there may not always be other people around when a person starts to choke. What you've just seen was based on an actual case history. If it hadn't been for Mrs. Price's good neighbor, she might not have survived. The boy who saved her life had learned the Heimlich maneuver in a first aid class at school. He immediately recognized the signs of a choking victim. The food nearby, her blue color, the fact that she was not breathing and was unconscious. He knew how to perform the Heimlich maneuver on a victim who had collapsed. He quickly rolled her onto her back with her head positioned upward. He did not reach into her mouth to try to retrieve the food because too often the rescuer's fingers will drive an object deeper into the airway. He knelt astride her hips, located her rib cage, and placed one hand on the other with the heel of his bottom hand on her abdomen slightly above the navel and below the rib cage. Then using the weight of his body, he pressed into her abdomen with a quick upward thrust. By the way, this same technique is the first treatment to perform on a drowning victim, to get the water out of the lungs before mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation has begun. Even a small child like Cindy here can perform the Heimlich maneuver, though her arms are too short to reach around an adult's waist. When I put Jennifer down on the floor,
Cindy can bring the weight of her body to bear to force the object out. Go ahead, Cindy. Very good. Of course, adults aren't the only victims of choking, but even infants and small children can be saved by a slight variation of the basic maneuver. Here, here, Jamie. Play with the choo-choo, okay? Here. Choo-choo, okay? -choo, I gotta go study now. Wendy here is babysitting her sister's two-year-old. But unfortunately, she can't watch the child every moment. Jamie's life was saved because Wendy recognized at once that he was choking. In fact, whenever a child is not breathing and there are no signs of injury or other ailments, you should assume he's a choking victim. Now notice what Wendy did and didn't do. She did not waste valuable time by turning the boy upside down to slap him between the shoulders. Instead, she employed a variation of the Heimlich maneuver which has proven effective for infants and children. Rather than using her fist as she would on an adult victim, she used her middle and index fingers, pressing into the boy's abdomen much more gently, of course, than on an adult. This same procedure can be used in a sitting position. We've seen how this simple technique can be used to save adults and children, but what can you do if you're alone and start to choke on something? It's common for many of us to eat alone. And there are times when we're far away from anyone who could help us if we should begin to choke. Watch how this young lady solves the problem. As you've just seen, when a choking victim is alone, the edge of a table or any horizontal surface can be used to force out the obstruction. In the same situation, you can even perform the standard Heimlich maneuver on yourself. You make a fist with one hand and position it slightly above the navel and below the rib cage. Then cover your fist with your other hand and press into the abdomen with a quick upward thrust, repeating the action if necessary. But so far we've been talking about treating the victim of choking. And it makes sense to ask, how do we prevent choking in the first place? Well, to begin with, always cut food into small pieces, not a big hunk like this one. Then chew it thoroughly and slowly. Avoid talking or laughing while you're chewing. And drinking alcohol increases the tendency to choke while eating. If you start to choke and you're not alone, stay where you are, because there may be someone present who can help. If, like many choking victims, Frank had tried to hide his embarrassment by rushing to a lavatory, his problem might not have been noticed until it was too late. If you are choking, there's a simple way to alert others to the fact. Just bring your hand to your throat. I devised this sign because the choking victim cannot speak. Anyone seeing this sign should ask, are you choking? A positive nod of the head gives a 100% diagnosis. In the case of children, special precautions apply. The play area should be carefully child-proofed to make sure there are no small toys or other objects around which could end up in his mouth. 
and a child should never be allowed to run with food or anything else in his mouth. Now let's review once more the basic signs that will help you recognize a choking victim, old or young. The victim usually has been eating. She is unable to breathe or to speak. She may clutch her throat, giving the Heimlich sign, which means I am choking. Her skin color turns pale or flushed and then deep blue. And lastly, if treatment is not immediate, she will lose consciousness and collapse. Once again, the treatment for the choking victim is simple. You wrap your arms around the victim's waist, then feel for the bottom of the rib cage. Make a fist with one hand and place the thumb side against the victim's abdomen, slightly above the navel and just below the rib cage. Then grasp your fist with the other hand and press into the victim's abdomen with a quick upward thrust. Repeat the maneuver several times if necessary until the obstructing object is expelled. None of us can know when a choking emergency may strike. Because of this, you owe it to yourself to master this simple technique. For when choking occurs, it's vital to remember that someone's life, your life, my life, the life of those you care about, is right here in your hands.